next. Thank you, all of you. Um, it's today. It's today. Uh, I was just checking my iPhone and um, got an email that um, several, a, a group of very high-powered business people in Arizona wrote a letter to uh, State Senator Russell Pierce, who is uh, you know, chairman of the Senate, and asked him to please not move forward with further immigration legislation. Um, I don't know how, what his response will be to that. Um, these, this uh, business group included people from, um, well, DMV, the developers who are very large, and um, U.S. Airways, and just large corporations, saying that um, Arizona's immigration legislation has hurt the state. So that is breaking news. Um, I uh, write for the Daily Beast Newsweek. I write Arizona stories. And I have been um, incredibly busy writing about immigration issues for the past year. And I'll be happy to talk to you about that. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about the people at ground zero of the immigration debate, the immigrants themselves. Um, about a year and a half ago, or yeah, about a year and a half ago, I was approached by Globe Pequot Press, which asked me, again, can you hear me? If you can't hear me, raise your hand, because I'm not used to, I'm not used to um, talking with the microphone. But anyway, um, the publisher, Globe Pequot Press, asked me to write a book about immigration. And um, it was left up to me what I would write about. Um, the, the result of, of a lot of thinking and um, research was this book, Illegal, which profiles actual illegal uh, undocumented immigrants living in the Phoenix area. And let me tell you a little bit about my methodology and how I came to write this book. Um, I First of all, I researched many, many books about immigration in the Arizona area, and they all focused on the border um, and crossing the border. But there was nothing written about the people who were the hunted ones, the people who live in Arizona, who um, are the focus of all these laws. And I wanted to understand what it was like for them to live here and who they were, who these people were, where they lived. I wanted to take people like you with me on a journey into their secret world. So um, the first thing I had to learn really was um, what, what prompted so much immigration, illegal immigration through Arizona. And as all of you know, and I'll briefly go into it, uh, just very briefly, um, Arizona is, the immigration enforcement was ramped up in California and Texas, which caused a funnel effect through Arizona's deserts. And it's my opinion that, it's just my guess really, that um, people who wrote these policies and who decided to focus enforcement on Texas and California figured that the Arizona desert in itself was such a barrier that people would not cross through because it is so harsh. But that ended up being not true, as you know, and um, Arizona became the main gateway, the Tucson sector became the main gateway for illegal immigration into the United States. Um, so one of the things that I did just to understand why people came was talk to people about their reasons for coming. And although the reasons for coming were almost always, the overarching reason was always an economic one, there were many, many other reasons that people crossed the border beyond the economic one. And um, some, in one case, um, an immigrant crossed 
simply because her husband had quit coming home at Christmas time and had quit writing her. So she crossed with her children, um, was apprehended by uh, coyotes and sent back, recrossed again, spent the night in the desert with these two little girls, and she thought, dear God, if I get bitten by a snake or a spider, will you please also have a snake or spider bite my children too so we can all tie together? Because she did not know what she would do if something happened to her with these two little girls. Um, they uh, finally arrived at the drop house, and um, her husband didn't pick her up, didn't pick her up. Everyone else had gone. She was the only one there with these two little girls. It ended up that her husband had found another family. He'd started another family. So here she was in Phoenix with two little girls, no social support at all. And um, one of these little girls uh, graduated from Arizona State University with honors uh, in psychology. And the second of these little girls is graduating this year with a degree in aeronautical engineering. Um, as you know, uh, undocumented people in Arizona cannot uh, pay in-state tuition, and they cannot um, get any public monies for scholarships. So these kids went to school on private scholarship. And um, as it stands now, even though we have this, uh, these two kids with these advanced, with these college degrees who graduated with honors, as it stands now, um, they have no future for working in Arizona because they are undocumented. So um, this is just one of the many, many people that I interviewed, um, and if you want, I can tell you a little bit more about the book. Um, or if you want, I can answer questions about what's happening now. Um, it's up to you. Do you, want to, do you want me to read a little bit? Well, yeah, yeah I'd like to, for you to go into the book if everybody agrees a little bit. Uh, okay. But I, I, when you do that, you know, what was your struggle, so to speak, to get people to talk, you know, and, 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 and do that? But my question is, um, I know there was a mass exodus out of Arizona of people. That affected the housing market yes. and also businesses and everything. And I don't know if you actually get into that, the effect that it had, as well as uh, how is the boycotting going against Okay. Us? Yeah. Okay. Um, to start out, uh, I come from, I grew up on a cattle ranch um, near Prescott. So I am from this country, and um, my family had ranches on both sides of the border. So as a child, growing up in uh, rural Arizona, it was very natural for me to learn Spanish at the same time I learned English in the 1950s. And um, further, because my grandmother lived in Mexico, it was absolutely nothing for us to cross over the border back and forth, back and forth. The border was, um, you know, its own, really, its own cultural biome, and um, I consider myself part of, you know, the old Arizona border family history. So, um, long story short, I speak Spanish, and um, people were very willing to open up to me and talk to me because they wanted people like you to know their stories and because they felt so stereotyped. Um, they, I told them that, the, that, that I would never pay them money and that I, would I wanted to follow them over a year's time. And um, I wanted to learn everything about them. I wanted to learn about their you know, their weaknesses, their strengths, their hopes, their dreams, their failures. I wanted to tell their stories as real people, and they, they jumped at this opportunity. Um, in, terms of, in terms of what happened following um, the passage of SB 1070, which is now being tested in the courts, um, and has been, you know, parts of it have been temporarily stayed, 
Um, we had a huge exodus of immigrants, uh, mostly to New Mexico and Utah, because uh, immigrants are allowed to drive and undocumented immigrants are allowed to drive in New Mexico and Utah. Um, it's very difficult with this population to get a firm count because this is a population that does not obviously want to be counted in Arizona. Um, but what happened in Phoenix, anecdotally, is that um, huge, uh, huge amounts of, uh, there were there are vacant areas. Apartments are vacant, houses were abandoned, stores stopped selling, you know, stores became shuttered. So um, it's very hard to put a fixed amount because we can't count this population. So it's very hard to say, okay, we lost two million dollars. But anecdotally, what is happening is that we've lost a tax, we've lost people paying real estate taxes, sales taxes, we've lost people uh, buying goods and services, and I think that we've lost a significant amount of people in the census count. Um, and what was the rest of your question? Well, I think you touched upon it, uh, you know, how much trouble it was for you to gather this information, uh, and uh, now I guess, oh, the uh, boycotting of the state, is that yeah, yeah, that, um, we have lost um, uh, tourism dollars, significant tourism dollars, I think oh, 200 million, I'm not sure, but I, I, that number sticks with me. Um, and in the letter in, in the Phoenix Business Journal today, um, you will find um, leaders of business, businesses saying, look, we have got to stop this because our image is so bad, we've had so many conventions canceled. Hotels are complaining. Um, so yeah, so it's had a huge impact on us, not to mention that we're considered a racist. I mean, we're viewed by many as a very racist state. So yeah. I have two questions. Yes, ma'am. One, what's going to happen when uh, the produce, uh, uh, the growth of vegetables, for example, are not hit? Because who's going to hit them if these people who are my dear workers run back and forth, who's going to pick the vegetables, okay? That's number one. The second one is, I was very upset that the Dream Act failed. Right. I want to know whether that's a possibility of being passed still. Okay, well, um, what's going to happen if, I, I spoke with people at the Arizona Farm uh, Bureau um, when I was writing this book, and what they're saying is that um, farmers are going into, um, instead of producing vegetables, which need to be picked, they're going into things like hay, which they can harvest by machine, which will mean an uptick in food prices. Um, the, um, does everyone know what the DREAM Act is? Okay. Um, the argument, um, the DREAM Act, as you know, has been, um, we've been trying to, uh, People have been trying to pass the DREAM Act, uh, I think for at least 10 years. And um, at one point, Senator McCain was all for it. Um, it basically, what it would do was give a pathway um, to legal residency to students who were brought here as children. Um, they had no choice in the matter. These are students who were brought here as children. They've lived here at least 10 years, and they have no criminal records. They have given temporary uh, residency, just temporary residency, not permanent residency, to um, attend school or serve in the military. And after that, um, if they behave themselves and they follow their goals and they finish school and they serve out their time in the military, they then get um, permanent legal residency, which is a green card. And after that, they can get citizenship after so many years. Um, the, uh, uh, the blockers of the DREAM Act say it encourages, it, it incentivizes illegal immigration into the United States. And those who are for it say it would bolster the middle class. It would um, remove, it would uh, make the 
underclass smaller and um, it would cause you know these kids to help take care of their parents and they wouldn't be they would be less likely to commit crimes and to use hospital emergency rooms and so on and so forth so um, but again um, in the climate today uh, the dream act has failed and failed and so these kids who are graduating from college uh, really have no choice but um, to, you know, they don't know Mexico. Mexico, they don't remember Mexico. They identify as American.